In this tutorial, we're going to make a really simple Open Graph Parser application. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central, and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be making a full stack app which basically sends a request to a web page or a URL and grabs out the Open Graph metadata from that particular URL. So just to give you a quick demo, if we just go and grab a URL, here I am on the Free Code Camp website, and we just pop it into this input box here and then click the button. The app is sending a network request and downloading that web page and then extracting all of the Open Graph metadata from it. And if you don't know what Open Graph is, it's basically part of the Facebook platform and it gives description about a particular URL. So things like the title of the article, the location of the image for the article, and then Facebook will use that information to generate previews and links to the article. So as you can see, it's just a series of meta tags. And if we have a look on this actual article page itself, in the head of the document, you can see about halfway down, here is that meta information, which simply has some properties, uh, which has the property call property, and it has things like the description and the URL of the image. So what our app actually does is just sends a request to that URL, parses the document, and then extracts those bits of information and presents them as a JSON object. And then if we click the button to copy it to the clipboard, we'll have a copy of that available to paste into wherever we need to use it. So that's the gist of what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. Just before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. So let's get started and set up our app. So let's just make a directory for our app and we'll call it Open Graph Scraper App. And then if we navigate into there and let's open up Visual Studio Code so we can start writing some code for our app. So the first thing I'm going to do is just set this up as an NPM project because we want to install some dependencies. So we'll say NPM init and we'll pass the Y option just to accept all of the default settings. So we've got some dependencies to install and I'm going to run through them all with you now. So the first one we're going to need is Express. And we need Express because we're actually going to be setting up a backend route which will actually send the request for the web page that the user is after. And you might be thinking, well, we could just send this directly through the browser using fetch or some other kind of AJAX request. And whilst that does work, you can actually send the request to retrieve the data and do all of the work on the front end. You can run into problems if you were going to use this properly, whereby some websites will actually block your request simply because it's a cross origin request. So by getting our back end to actually send the request for the web page, we avoid any of those issues and can happily access another site and scrape its data. So the other thing we're going to need in addition to Express is the body parser middleware, which is kind of part of the Express framework in the sense of it's going to enable us to parse JSON from our, from our front end. And the final thing we'll need for that is cores as well, which is another piece of middleware which will allow us to send requests from our front end that are on a different location, like a different URL, even if it's a different port number, to our back end code. To actually make the request, I'm going to use the Axios library. And then to actually do our parsing, I'm going to use the XML DOM library and also XPath. And I'll talk a little bit more about what these do in a little while. And finally, I'm just going to install Bootstrap as well, just so we can use that on our front end for a little bit of styling. Oops, and I forgot to put install here. So npm install those packages. Okay, and I'm just going to install a couple of dev dependencies as well. So install minus D, we'll put them as dev dependencies. And I'm going to install parcel, which we'll be using as our build tool for the front end. So with that installed, if we look at our package.json file, uh, you should see some of the default settings in there and also the dependencies that we've just installed. And we need a little bit more setup before we can make a start with things. I'm just going to, first of all, create a a new folder and I'm just going to call that source and inside there I'm going to put some skeleton files for us. So the first thing we're going to need for our front end is just a HTML document and also we're going to have our server code and we'll also have our app code for the front end. And finally we'll just create a, a SAS file that we can use uh, for our styling so we might need to do a little bit around that for our completed app, and that should be all the skeleton files that we need. Uh, just back in our package.json file quickly, I'm just going to create a new script to enable us to run parcel uh, quickly, and I'll just call that serve. And all it's going to say is basically parcel serve, and we want to serve the index file. Don't forget that parcel will be used to build our front end, 
for us. And then we can just quickly build our project with npm run serve. Right, so let's actually write our code for the back end first of all, so we can get that up and running. So the first thing I'm going to do is just load in all of the uh, required libraries that we set up as dependencies that we need for our server. So first of all, let's get express going and I'm going to require it with that keyword there. And we're also going to import body parser as well. And that is just body dash parser. There we go. And also Axios, uh, which is our, going to be used for our network requests. And then we also need those uh, par parsing libraries. So XPath is basically a way of parsing XML documents, or in our case, it's going to be a HTML document and extracting certain bits of information from it. And we also need, in conjunction with that, we need the uh, DOM parser library, which I'm just going to extract or rather destructure from the XML DOM uh, dependency that we added. And finally, we'll just add in cores as well and save that into a variable called cores. So that's all the dependencies we need. I'm going to now set up the app with Express. So we just call the Express function. And then a couple of bits of configuration for Express. We say app.use. I'm going to use the body parser.json. So this will allow our server to actually accept JSON data and be able to work with it. And also we use the cores library too, so that we can have cross origin requests. So the next thing I'm going to do is set up our X paths. So these are the descriptions of how to actually extract those bits of information from a web document. I'm just going to paste those in there for you to see. So essentially, I've just created an object called XPaths, and it's got uh, the title, description, image, and keywords. And these strings here are the actual XPaths, which will hopefully, if this data exists in the document, extract that information so we can use it within our app. So these won't do anything on their own. We actually need to use them in conjunction with the uh, imports that we've uh, had up here. So we'll create a couple of functions that will actually make use of those. So the first function will just actually retrieve the contents of a page. So we'll say uh, retrieve page. We'll take uh, a parameter of URL and we'll create an arrow function, which literally just says uh, axios.request uh, to that URL. So the request function with Axios will simply send a get request to that endpoint. So it actually creates a promise so we can then chain that into some other functions. So once we've got the data from the URL, what we actually need to do is kind of convert that into an actual DOM object. So we're actually recreating the data that's been sent back to us as a kind of browser object that we can navigate through. So I'll just create a function called convert body to document. Just have the casing right there. And again, this will just take one parameter. So that'll be the result of the Axios request, basically. And I'm just creating a new DOM parser object. And we just say parse from string, and I'm going to pass in the body that was passed as an argument. So at this point now, we should have a DOM object that we can work with. And the XPath library provides us with a select function, which will allow us to apply an XPath to a document object and then get the nodes that are inside it. So we'll call this function nodes from document. And we're going to have two arguments this time. So we'll have the document that we're working with and also the individual XPath, I will say XPath selector. And now all we do is basically call the XPath select function. And then we just pass it the XPath selector and then the document. So the final function we're going to create is basically going to map those nodes into a JavaScript object so we can return it to the user. So this is where the actual meat of the work happens. So we'll just call this function map properties. And we're going to pass in the X pass that we're looking at and also the document again. And I'm just going to use a reduce function here. So I'm first of all, going to get an array of the keys from our, the paths that have been passed in as a parameter. So these will be these X paths up here ultimately. So we'll reduce that array and I'll access the uh, accumulator for the reduce function and also each individual key in turn. And what I'm going to pass back from this is an object each time, because ultimately we just want one object that has all of the properties that were in our original X paths object at the top. Uh, so we'll pass back, we'll spread in the accumulator for it. And then for each key, we'll set up a new property. And then we'll call that nodes from document function. And then we'll pass in the overall document. And inside our paths object, this is the one that's been passed into this map properties function. We'll access that key, which really will be returning one of these values inside of the X paths array. 
And then finally, I'm just going to initialize the reduce function with an empty object. And then I'm just going to create one final function here, which will be the main function that kind of calls and starts off this chain. Um, and I'll call that parse URL. So all we need to know really to achieve our result is the actual uh, overall URL that we're working with. So we'll say um, for the URL, I'm going to retrieve the page first of all. So that will call our Axios request. And then we get a response back from that. And with that response, don't forget that will just be the raw uh, string of the URL that's been parsed back, so the, the actual document body. So we're going to create a document over uh, out of that. So I call that convert body to document function and then pass it in from Axios. It'll be response.data. So the actual information is held on the data property. And then we'll get a list of those mapped properties. And we'll do that by calling the map properties function. So what we need to path, pass in here, we need a list of paths or an object that has those paths and then the actual document that we've just created. We use this global object that we've created up here, although we could have defined it in this parse URL function if we wanted to. And we'll say the X paths and then we need to pass in the document that we've just created too. So once we've then got those map properties, all we need to do is just return it from our then chain. And from that point, all we do now is set up our Express app to use that parse URL function. So we'll create a single root and we'll just say uh, scrape. So this is going to be a post request and that will receive a callback with request and response objects inside there. And so I'm just going to extract uh, the body from the request. So we're going to be sending some data to this endpoint from the front end. Uh, and inside of the body, there will be one uh, property inside that. So one uh, actual property inside the JSON data that's sent to us. And we'll call that URL. So we could do a bit of validation here, but just for time, I'm just going to skip that. And I'm going to parse the URL and calling that function. So the URL that's come from the body of our post request is going to be used. And then uh, all I'm going to do with the result that comes back from the parse URL function, which basically just should be a JavaScript object that has all of those uh, extracted properties, is call res.json and send it back that result. So with the root setup, all we need to do now is to say app.listen and I'll choose a port here. So we'll say port 3000 and I will just pass in the callback a message just to let us know that that is actually working. So what we can do is actually test out that endpoint now and make sure it works okay. So uh, let's just run the uh, server file here. And you can see that it's sitting there listening for requests. So uh, if we just open up Postman. So if we make a request to localhost and then scrape and in our body that we send uh, to our request in Postman, if we just uh, say it's raw and we set the uh, type as JSON and we'll have one property in there, which is the URL. And we'll use that free code camp uh, URL again. If I actually send that request now, Oh, whoops, I forgot to send it as a post request, so let's change that. Oh, and that actually did give me an error as well. Let's have a look. Uh, cannot access URL before initialization. Line 15. Okay, so let's check that out. Uh, 15. Uh, yep. Okay, that's not going to work, is it? So uh, what we actually meant to do there was actually extract um, the URL property that's inside of body. Uh, so let me just restart that server. And we'll try that post request again. And there you go, you can see we've got a response there with some JSON data uh, with the title, description, image, and there's obviously no keywords in that page, but everything else seems to have worked pretty well. So that's the back end done. Let's move on to the front end and see how that all works. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a blank HTML document for our app, and we'll say OG Scraper as the title. And I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to uh, load in that style.css file that we had and also uh, the I'm going to set up a script tag which is going to be uh, what do we call it uh, app.js which is also in the same directory so let's just put a little bit of markup in here and um, just to see everything's working and I'm going to set that running now and if you remember in the package.json I created a custom 
uh, serve command, so npm run serve. What parse will actually do is install anything that it needs to um, parse our SAS and our JavaScript. So if you have a look at that now uh, in the browser, you'll see that's working uh, on port 1234. And just to note that that's obviously why we needed to uh, install cores and express because even though we're on still on local host for the server and the front end because we're on different ports uh, the browser still sees that as a cross origin request okay so let's go and fill out the rest of our templates here so the first thing I'm going to do is put in our markup uh, and I'm going to use a few bootstrap classes here so let's first put that uh, heading level one tag inside a container and using bootstraps columns and rows uh, we just want one column here really and uh, we're going to create a form and it's not going to have an action as such we'll just call it url form and inside that we just need the one input box so uh, let's create a form group which is a, a class that holds bootstrap form controls and in there we'll have a label um, and we're just going to have one input just called url just say enter a URL to parse and then we just need that input box in there and we'll just give it an ID of URL to match the label and it's a text and we'll just give it a class of form control uh, to help bootstrap style it for us and then finally all we need is a button uh, that has a class of btn, btn block so it spans the page or the container at least and we'll say primary to give it some color and just say parse. So that's the form to actually make our request. We need somewhere to show our results. Uh, so let's have uh, another row and inside there we'll have a column and we'll just give this one a specific ID so that we can target it with our JavaScript in a moment but we can actually just leave that blank for the moment because that's what's going to get populated uh, with our response. And then underneath this I'm actually going to create another row uh, for our copy to the clipboard button uh, so there's a column there again as well and a button and it'll have a class btn, btn block, btn primary and we don't want it visible uh, when there's no results so I'm just going to set it to invisible that's a special bootstrap class that just hides it for us and I'll give that button ID as well so say copy to clipboard and then just give it some text so we'll say copy to clipboard. So that's all of the markup uh, that we need. Um, let's go over to our SAS file here. We're just going to import bootstrap. So if we say import and then it'll be from our node modules and we've got bootstrap, dist and then CSS and let's just get the, the minified CSS version there. That's fine. So parcel is really good. It'll go away and install SAS for us because it knows now that there's some SAS uh, files that need parsing on our app. So uh, we can just leave it to do that, which is pretty handy. Um, we can then turn our attention back to the front end JavaScript code. So we're actually going to uh, make our request here. Um, let's just open up the app.js file. We're going to make the request here using Axios as well. So I think this is a really good example about how you can install a node package uh, in your kind of project and use it on both the back end and the front end as well. And Axios is flexible enough to know how to actually send those requests depending on whether it's in the browser or not. So let's first of all just set up uh, our function inside our window uh, on load just so we make sure the document's loaded before we start doing anything. And now I'm just going to get a reference to all of those elements on the page so that we can make use of them in our code. So we've got the URL form. And then we've got the uh, actual URL from the input box. So that's got an ID of URL. And then the next thing we want to target is the result. And then finally, uh, the copy button, or copy to uh, clipboard, we called it, I think. So with those references set up, we can then set uh, an event listener up for our URL form. Uh, so let's add an event listener, and we'll just say submit, so whenever the form's submitted. And we'll just access the event uh, that's triggered from that. And the reason why I want the event is because we're going to call event prevent default, which will stop the normal browser form submission process from uh, occurring. 
but once we've done that, we can send our request with Axios. Again, we should probably do some validation here, but just for time, I'm going to skip that on this occasion. So HTTP, so our server should be running at localhost 3000, port 3000 and scrape. And with Axios, if you want to specify a post HTTP request, you simply change the method property in the object that's supplied to it. And the data that we're going to pass in is going to be based off of that URL input box, but we want to access its value. So it's URL.value. And again, even in the browser, this will return a promise for us. So we can then say, then we get access to uh, the response. Um, but if you remember from the back end, the actual uh, data that gets passed back is inside a property called data. So I'll just use some destructuring here to only access the data property that's uh, returned for us there. And then what I'm going to do in the then block, first of all, in the copy to clipboard element, uh, I'm going to remove that invisible uh, class from it so that we can actually see the copy to clipboard button. And then obviously the main thing that we want to do is update the result element uh, to actually have the data that's been sent back from the API. So uh, here we're going to get the inner HTML of that result property. I'm going to use a template literal um, and I'm going to wrap our data in a pre-formatted tag uh, which will help the data display uh, with the correct indentation and what we do with the data that's come back we just stringify it so we don't want it as a, an actual object we want it as a string and pass that into there and with stringify if you pass the second parameter in as null and then the final one as a space or a couple of spaces uh, or any other kind of marker. It will actually format the result of the stringify operation so that we get some nice indentation in our result. Of course, if you didn't necessarily want this data back in a JSON format, you could do some other kind of processing with the result as well and maybe display it as a list or a table. But obviously JSON's a pretty handy for data format to have and if you're copying it to your clipboard, chances are that's a good format so you can put it in a document elsewhere. So I'm going to set up another event listener as well and that that's on the copy button. So copy to clipboard, uh, add event listener. And when you click it, what we want to do is as the name suggests, copy that data to your clipboard. So there are various different ways uh, to do this. I did a video a little while ago about different ways that you can copy to the clipboard. But again, not checking for too many errors. I'm just going to assume that we've got the uh, clipboard API available uh, in our browser, which it is in Chrome. And I'm just going to write the text directly to that. So write the inner text value uh, that's inside of our result div. And I'm just going to do a couple of things. Uh, the copy to the clipboard button, I'm just going to change the text of that just to say that it's been copied. So the user knows that that's actually happened. And then finally, I'll just set a timeout of about two seconds. And what we'll do at that point is basically just reset the uh, copy to clipboard button text back to its original. Okay, so let's save that and let Parcel rebuild it. And if we head back on over to the browser, again, let's just copy the free code camp uh, article to our clipboard and we'll just paste it in there. And now when we click parse, you can see our front end request has actually hit our API and actually got that data and displayed it on the page. And if we just have a look in our network tab and just click parse again, you can see this is the response from the API. And if we check our payload at the bottom, you can see that's the URL that we sent to the back end. So that's pretty much it. I think we'll just add a tiny bit of styling in our SAS file since we went through the effort of actually creating that. I'm just going to directly target the, the pre-formatted tag. Uh, let's just change our font family. So courier is usually a good one for uh, code. So let's have that there. And let's just set a background color as well. And if we just set it as black and then maybe just adjust that slightly for our background. And then finally just set the color to white and just small amount of padding as well. Let's say 10 pixels just so that text appears as we want it. And if we look again there, now you can see Parcel's updated that for us, and that's just making it a little bit easier to read. Uh, so let's just finally test out the copy uh, button. So as you can see, the text changes, and it should change back after a few seconds. And if we just try and paste that in there now, you can see that's been written to my clipboard.
So that pretty much completes our full stack application for this tutorial. Uh, it's probably not the kind of thing that you would actually create as a standalone app. It's probably something that you would incorporate into a wider application where you might want to uh, get that open graph data. And of course, you're not restricted to specifically parsing open graph meta tags. If you know the right X paths, it could be any data that you want to extract from a particular web page. So even if you haven't got a need to grab open graph data, you could follow the same process inside of a larger application if you wanted to scrape a particular web page and extract certain elements from it. So that's it for this tutorial. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. And I'll see you again when we're building our next full stack app.